Looks like most everybody has gotten connected. So once again, welcome to Unabridged Bookstore. Um, tonight, we are thrilled to have Adam Levin and Gabriel Bump with us here. If you're new to the way that we do these events, um, welcome, first of all. Thank you for venturing into this virtual space. Um, as we go through tonight, if you have a question that you want to share with these authors, near the bottom of your screen, you should see a little Q&A panel. Um, if you click on that, it'll give you the option to submit some questions. And as we have time, um, we'll try to get answers to those. If you're experiencing any technical difficulty or have any questions about this or any of our other events, you can go ahead and respond to that um, email that you were sent with the invite. And I'll keep an eye out on that in case anybody needs some help. Um, but since it looks like everybody so far is here, let's go ahead and get started. Um, tonight we have uh, Adam Levin, the author of The Instructions, Hot Pink, and now Bubblegum. Um, Adam has been a New York Pub Public Library Young Lions Fiction Award winner, recipient of a National Endowment for the Arts Fellowship, and a National Jewish Book Award finalist. He's a longtime Chicagoan who now I think lives in Florida, is that right? That's right, in Gainesville, yeah. Uh, joining us all the way from Florida. And um, hosting our conversation tonight is Gabriel Bump. Um, Gabriel Bump, also from South Shore, Chicago. Uh, Gabriel received his MFA in fiction from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. His debut novel, Everywhere You Don't Belong, was a New York Times notable book of 2020. Uh, won the Ernest J. A. Gaines Award for Literary Excellence, the Great Lakes Colleges Association New Writers Award for Fiction, the Heartland Booksellers Award for Fiction, and the Black Caucus of the American Library Association's First Novelist Award. Um, and I believe you are teaching at, uh, in North Carolina Chapel Hill now, right? Yep. We're lucky to have you both from way far away from Chicago, but two homegrown Chicago boys here to talk to us tonight. So <laughs> help me welcome them virtually and thank you all for joining us. Yeah, th thanks, Aaron, for the uh, introduction. Uh, and so I think how we're going to do it, I'm going to say a few words about Adam and this, this book I, I really love. Uh, and, and Adam, this person, I, I really dig. Uh, and then Adam will read a little bit, and then we'll jump into some questions, if you'll have them. I think I see some familiar faces, uh, like Claire O'Connor. I see you down there. Um, so, I mean, for me, this is uh, a really special and like surreal night. Uh, I, I met Adam uh, probably nine years ago, nine or 10 years ago. Uh, I had just moved back to Chicago from two pretty disastrous years in Missouri. Uh, and I decided that I would go to the School of the Art Institute, uh, study in writing, which I didn't like know that you could do actually, like in some like degree in writing. And uh, I didn't like know what to expect, right? Like when, when I went to SAIC, uh, I think still in my mind, I wanted to keep like writing about basketball and like doing sports journalism like I was doing in, uh, in Missouri. Uh, took some fiction classes down there that showed me that fiction could be cool and interesting, but I think it wasn't until my second semester at SAIC where I took Adam's class and he showed us uh, Saunders, Bartholomew, Dybeck, and just kind of filled the room with this uh, love for, for writing and really described it as art for me, right? And it made me feel like this would be a really fun thing to do, right? Write novels and write books. Uh, and this wasn't too long after the instructions came out. And uh, I like remember taking your class and being like, yo, this dude like is fucking awesome. Uh, this dude's really cool. And so <laughs> I think I went home that winter break uh, and read the instructions really fast for me, right? This like a thousand page book that I, I read in about a week during winter break. I couldn't, couldn't put it down and, uh, I think after meeting him as a person and then reading his work, I, I just really wanted to know how this person's brain can work like that, right? Like, like how do you kind of become Adam, Adam Levin? Uh, and so I just started sending him emails all the time uh, in class, just like, yo man, like what are you reading? Like, what should I read? Like, give me this long list of books. Uh, to read. I'd read all of them. I'd come back to them and say, well, oh, where you wrong with some books? And this is back also uh, when there wasn't like much TV on, right? I feel like there's like streaming like wasn't a big thing. So it's like the two shows, like Boardwalk Empire 
uh, and like Breaking Bad were like on. And so we would have these three hour classes and I took every semester I was there, I'd make sure I'd take at least one of Adam's class uh, per semester. And uh, we'd have like an hour and a half of workshop, take a break, go downstairs, uh, smoke cigarettes together and like talk about what happened on like Breaking Bad. Right. And like, and I just thought like, that's what being a writer was, right. It was like just chilling with cool people, smoking cigarettes and uh, just chatting about art and craft. And um, I think it wasn't until I left SAIC that I realized that that's not what like being a writer is, right. Like that kind of community, <laughs> that like connection is pretty, is pretty rare, I think to, to find in someone. So um, I could go, I could go on and on, but um uh, really lucky, I think, to know to know Adam and to have uh, had Adam uh, really just get get my back right through, through a lot of stuff. He always uh, pushed me in the right direction. I went to grad school because he introduced me to Jeff Parker, um, and I was like, okay, if Adam signs off on Parker and UMass, that's where I got to go, uh, and just kind of for almost a decade. Right, it's, it's, uh, I know that if I can ever reach out to, if I ever need to reach out to Adam just to ask him something, I know he'll respond. Uh, and not a lot of relationships end up that way, right? And um, so now Bubblegum, this weird fucking book. <laughs> this, weird, this weird, huge book. Uh, I feel like, and this is, I think a little bit later we'll, we'll talk about uh, how you would describe it, like how kind of the writing of this came about. Um, because for me, it's hard to really pin down what's going on here, right? Like it, it's, a, it's somewhat, you hear it described as science fiction, which I don't actually totally agree with, right? Like there, there's some alternate universe stuff happening, but uh, I think the, the best way I'll describe it right now before we get into the conversation is it's just an amazing adventure into the mind of a very strange protagonist. Uh, that is like equal parts, kind of bizarre, uh, funny, touching, um, carries all the hallmarks of, of Adam's writing. I think when it's working at its best, it's uh, able to contain contain multitudes, I think, that are hard to achieve. Right? And, and so, um, yeah, Adam, how about you just read us a little bit, if you don't mind. I will. I will. Um, also, I, just, I thank you for that intro. That was uh... This is, as you can probably imagine, I'm, or maybe you can't imagine, if you know me, you know I'm like, uh, I have a problem expressing kind things. Um, but uh, but yeah, Gabe was, uh, you were a, a pleasure to have as a student and, and to, it's been a pleasure to be your friend since you've been a student. And yeah, I don't know, this, this is a yeah, ideal student. I imagine you're gonna be an ideal teacher. And uh, also, um, Everywhere You Don't Belong really was one of the best books that came out last year. And this is for, for a teacher. I, I don't even, I, I honestly can't take credit for it. I did put you on to reading some good stuff, but you came in like you really kind of knew what you were doing. And I don't know, just got better. Every time you read something, you became a just... I don't know, like left plateaus. Anyway, all right, all right enough, enough. Okay, yeah, that's good. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Um... All right, all right. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna read from the beginning of this book. Uh, so I don't think I have to actually explain anything. I'm gonna go right from the start. Uh, just do a few minutes. Um, so the opening chapter is uh, it's in a section called invitation, and the chapter is called uh, John Boat Say. Growing up, I'd heard "shut your pie hole, cake face" a couple or three times a week from my father. The pie hole that's shutting, he demand was rarely mine though. It usually belonged to someone well outside, well outside shouting range, as frequently a radio or television newsman as a bested foe in a dinner table anecdote of everyday interpersonal victory, and never to my mother. She'd never been a cake face, not to my father or me at least. Nor had she ever used the saying herself, and after she was gone, I wondered what, if anything, that might have meant. Except for when she'd hear it from my father's mother, who put a bite behind the pie hole that somehow made it sharper than whatever slur the cake face was being used to euphemize. The saying seemed always to incite her to smile. Yet I may have been too young to distinguish true amusement from motherly indulgence. I may have been too young to tell a smile from a smirk. Come to think of it, I can't recall my mother ever smirking. But all of this to say that while Johnny John Boat Pelmore Jason, by eventually having made it his catchphrase, 
popularized shut your pie hole cake face. It had been ours first, my family's, we magnets. He learned it from me. There used to be a couple of tetherball courts in the middle of the playground next door to our house. And one day around the start of seventh grade, Blackie Buxman and I were facing off on one of them, playing best of nine for a soda and chips when John Boat, who'd moved to town a week earlier, declared his intention to challenge the winner. Buxman wouldn't rob liquor stores for years yet. He was at that time our school's starting pitcher and basketball center. I lacked strength and was average of stature. My competitive streak was the width of a noodle. Having grown up so close to the playground, however, I dominated Foursquare and Tetherball the both. Blackie must have forgotten or maybe never known. When I beat him five zip, he evinced disbelief. He said, no way, then spoke to me rudely. Go ass fuck a swing set, you psycho, he said. That cut me a little, but I came back fast. I said, fetch me my cold cherry Coke and Pringles. In the meantime, though, shut your pie hole, cake face. John Boat laughed. The crowd around the court took a couple steps back, alarmed and confused. I possessed at that time a fair size, however provisional measure of black sheepish cool. And so as someone who'd have normally been able to get away with wising off to Bucksman in response to a slight, it would have looked like we were riffing. But John Boat's laughter bent the social calculus. No one quite understood where he fit yet. Girls seemed to like him. He was certainly big. His father was John, 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 Jason, and his granddad, Hubert All Hell Pelmore. Nevertheless, John Boat was the new kid, the new rich blonde kid. He didn't have friends or we were all of us his friends. None of us were sure. For all we knew, John Boat was too blonde and rich. Was that a thing? It seemed like it could be and it seemed like it couldn't. Did he have the right to laugh at Blackie's expense though? And if he had the right to laugh at Blackie's expense, did I have the right to get credit for his laughter? Did Blackie Buxman have to save face? Blackie thought he did. So it was John Boat or me. Someone had to hurt. I was the easy choice and Blackie liked it easy, simple as that. He stepped in my direction. John Boat shoved him sideways. Blackie reached for John Boat and John Boat smashed his nose. You'll pay, Blackie said. Shut your pie hole cake face, Gaylord, said John Boat. Blackie loped, loped home without buying me snacks. John Boat roundly defeated me at tetherball, five to three, and took me out for pizza. We were friendly for a while, though not really friends, till a few months later when he beat me up at school. I think I'll, I'll stop there. Yeah, 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 I think that's perfect. Yeah, I think the names, the names and nicknames here, uh, I feel are, are top tier, top tier. We got Belt Magnet, uh, our, our protagonist. And um, I think like where, where I kind of want to start uh, is I just want to figure out you know, how you've been able to write, including a, a collection of stories, and I guess like a forthcoming novel, which, which you say is, is less heavy, right? Mm -hmm. Weight-wise, like it's, uh, yeah. it's not a, uh, like what, what's the page count looking like for the next one? I, you know, it's how, it's how they do the margins and all that, but like, it's probably somewhere between five and 600 pages. Yeah, yeah, okay. And so, like with bubble gum and the the instructions, right? I, I wonder, like where where did you start? And you can answer with the instructions and the bubble gum because there's so much. You can start with the instructions, then we can talk about bubble gum. But there's so much in, particularly this book. I think like the instructions reads like more like uh, uh, you know a big narrative, right? Like this, this big kind of uh, a story, right? Like this like massive. Uh, uh, with a massive like climax and a battle and this history connected to it. Uh, this one, we're just kind of hanging out in this dude's head. Like and he's writing this like rambling memoir that, that touches all these amazing little corners, I think, right? Like we have these curios, these, these little uh, like 3D Tamagotchi things, right? These little adorable pets, right? Like they're kind of electronic pets. Uh, that are first introduced is this cure for like mental illness, right? Like a cure for depression. Yeah. And it kind of just takes this, uh, becomes this big industrial thing. Like, you know, capitalism takes it over, I guess you can say it becomes this thing. Uh, but then like there's this really touching like love story kind of 
falling underneath it. Uh, there's this male friendship with Bell and, and John Bone, and even there are breaks where we get like kind of film theses like stacked up and, and explained. Like there just seems so much more in, in so much in Bubblegum that doesn't necessarily follow a narrative arc as you imagine it like simply right like it's not like the triangle or something yeah. like that and, uh so i don't know i just would like to to hear so i think people will find it interesting right like how how did these two books like come about right like what was kind of the, the inspiration for the instructions then like for this one well i mean, I mean the instructions like w like with anything that i write it's always like there's i write some sentence that i like in a voice and then I, and, and it's usually takes me a while to get to that when I haven't made anything in a while. And then, and then I go, okay, I'm going to do this voice um, and see where it leads me. And, and that's going to tell me who the character is. Um, but with the instructions, I mean, like in terms of like how that book actually like sort of the order in which it happened was like the, the first thing I wrote in the instructions was actually like the very beginning of the instructions minus yeah. like page and a half, like, um, which I added, that was the last thing I wrote was the first page and a half or so. But, um, but I, I just, I started writing about this kid um, who I knew, like it was like, it, it wasn't going to be nonfiction, but I was thinking about this kid. Um, and then who, who was this sort of outsider kid um, who like sort of thought um, sort of more highly of his capacities as a fighter and a thinker than um, he should have. Um, like he was a kid I got in fights with. Like he was a kid who <laughs> me, you know, like, and, and then, but like really quickly, I, 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 I thought that's actually kind of boring. Like I didn't like, like within like 10 pages and, and I, but I, but I kind of liked the sort of boldness of the voice or whatever we want to call it, the sort of bombasticness. I don't know, yeah. um, bombasticity, I don't know. But, but, uh, and so then I started thinking about him as like a, as a Jewish kid and like as a kid who like did have, who sort of came from the same place, the same kind of suburb. Um, and then it just, it just sort of rapidly became this thing where I thought maybe this is a Messiah story. Like I had been, I, I was reading like a lot of, I just come out of social work school. So like my, the two thoughts, the two thought streams that I generally had were about um, mental illness and therapy, that would be thought stream one. And the other one, um, especially as regards children. And then the other one would be, um, Judaism, just because I thought I, I, I was reading, um, I was reading the Torah, I was reading the old Testament a lot. Not, not so, not so much out of, uh, anything religious as just out of like, wow, this is a crazy book. It's like yeah. real, smiling. It's like a real <laughs> fun book. Yeah. Like thinking about it as, this, I, I don't know, just like these amazingly punchy, I don't know, at least parts of it. I, I mean, you know, like, you know, uh, numbers isn't so fun, like, but, but, but like it, it, it's, it's, yeah. it, it's really wild. And, and so, so, and, and I think, um, so I started thinking maybe this is like, I want to tell, uh, you know, a story about like, that's sort of like a cool hand Lukeish kind of, you know, Messiah story. And then I was like, yeah, but cool hand Luke is perfect. Like, why would I want to do that? You know, one floor of the cuckoo's nest near per like this has been done. And so then I just thought, so maybe you should just write a book about a kid who actually thinks he's the Messiah. Like, it's not subtle. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. just, it's just going to be like, contend with that. And then that, that for me, like was very, it was just exciting for me to think about that and what that might look like. And so I wrote it. I thought I'd want to write that book. I'd want to read that book rather. And so I, so I tried to write it and it took a really long time. Um, and then and then I think with Bubblegum, I kind of like, there was like, uh, part of it was one of the things the instructions ended up being largely about is friendship and loyalty. Yeah. And with Bubblegum, I started thinking, okay, you know, first off, like, um, I'm obviously very interested in friendship as, 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 a, as something to think about. And so I thought, you know, and, and I didn't want to write a book that was like the instructions. Yeah. And, so, uh, and so I thought, you know, what if it's a guy who can't really make friends, who's like, who's like a kind person and like, and what if he's a guy who unlike the protagonist of the instructions um, is actually really kind of passive is like yeah. a lot of things happen to him rather than make everything happen. Cause in the instructions, like at any given opportunity, the protagonist is going to punch someone in the face, like, yeah. it's like, or yell at them, you know, like it's like, and, 
and I wanted to think about someone, uh, you know, a different kind of person. And I was also real interested, like not to get like wonky, but like in writing a certain kind of sentence that was that that just sort of did more than most most sentences that that I read, and even sentences I love that just like accomplished a lot more plot wise or narrative wise um, without getting into uh, sort of the lyricism of describing the physical world, which I'm generally not that interested in reading. And so yeah. I, and so I started getting this voice and, and, uh, and then, and I liked it and I thought, all right, I'm going to proceed this way and see, see how that rolls. And so, yeah. So. Well, and so that's actually what, uh, like I find fascinating about, about the two. And, and I think that, uh, uh, we should talk about some hot pink too, at least sure. at some point, but, uh, like I like the set on the sentence level, they're like two different books. Yeah, like they like look differently. They almost seem like uh I mean, I don't know, there's things that just are happening like in, in your writing voice, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, this is like an Adam within mm -hmm. sentence or something, particularly like how these friendships and like the characters like play out. But like on a sentence level, they're different books, right? Like I, I think instruction, like you you don't you rarely in there put a sentence that's like five lines. Right. right the sentence kind of a shorter like there's more characters coming in out there's more like happening in dialogue yeah. like we're stuck in this dude's head mostly right for 700 pages yeah right and and what i think oh. is uh what? in bubblegum yeah yeah, yeah bubblegum yeah yeah bubblegum bubblegum we're selling it for like 700 pages and like i i think that the the impressive part well one of the several like impressive parts about this is that it doesn't like lose steam ever right and, and i think that like i don't know how like how you achieve that right stuck in this kind of this voice this imagined voice and like where does the uh like where does the energy come from right to like keep to keep that going if if you know or is it just something that like can flick on any given day right like where you, where you snap and go well, I mean, first of all, I'd say thank you. That's like, that's an amazing compliment. Um, but, but second, I would say, I, I mean, I just have like, I have a very low tolerance for boredom. Like, like I don't, yeah, yeah. and so, so it does, it, it, there's no, like, I, for me, there's not like a magic thing. Like I work every day and then, and I delete most of everything. And so yeah. something bores me the seventh time I read it, even, even if it's exciting, the first six times I usually am going to cut it. Um, so, so I think, I think that's all it is. There's like, it's not like, uh, and, and it probably is some days or some weeks are really, really productive. Like some weeks it's on, um, most of the time it's off and I'm just like hitting a wall and hitting a wall. And in the meantime, something sort of germinates and, and, and I'm like, no, this, this is the exciting thing that you, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I don't think that, yeah, there's no, I mean, I don't know, you, you do this too in, in your novel, you don't have the, the long sentences so much, yeah, yeah. But, but, um, I think that's the process of, 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 uh, trying to write fiction is really getting down to um, what's essential sounds a little corny and it sounds like I'm talking about Raymond Carver or something. It's not like what's essential, but like what's exciting, like what what is going to make a reader lean in and like want to be in that world that you're that you're that you're describing that your characters are living in rather than um, learn a lesson or like, you know, so, so all the other bullshit they tell you books are supposed to do the thing, yeah. the thing are, that novels are supposed to do is move you and and like just sort of make you not want to leave them i think so, so yeah so no and i think that like actually uh let's see what's not like the difference between essential and like in the traditional sense and like exciting i think is like really interesting i think touches on the parts of this book that like i love so much mm -hmm. right like and, and i'm thinking mainly like because yeah. i was looking back over this uh and about 600 pages in uh, there's a big, there's a climactic brunch that happens where the, where, <laughs> which is like, a, like hilarious, right? Like a climactic brunch and Belt goes to, uh, to John Boat's house. And like his John Boat is just this billionaire, like literally he goes to this like hilarious mansion. It's really slow moving. And then they just have this exchange that lasts about 10 pages, but it's really complex and you can kind of mine it for things that like have to do with the plot, right? But, but one of the things about Bell is the inanimate objects, like uh, 
like how would you describe it i, I guess they like plead for him to like kill sure. them usually destroy yeah. them yeah, yeah like he's like please put me out of yeah. please put me out of their misery and so he's like holding this like helmet and this helmet's like the jambo is made he's holding the helmet and the helmet's begging uh belt to kill it and then belt decides not to do it right it's like this cool kind of passive thing right so it's not to do it and then uh john boat what's well, less like john boat and belt get in this exchange which more that like belt makes a comment about uh like was it like looking like a million bucks right yeah. or like I, I like feel like a million bucks and like john boat goes on this about 10 page uh really bizarre like unhinged uh analogy like just talking about money and people's worth and uh it's not like essential at all in the traditional sense right and like it's one of those things where it's even surprising how it even ends up in the book right like i guess if you got 700 pages like the kind of the the, the page uh well i don't even know man like how do you figure out what stays and like what goes right how do you how do you talk with your editor right about like what's uh exciting like what's essential like what's kind of this whole process like well i mean it depends on the editor yeah. like so and it depends on the book you, you know it's, it's so so um with my current editor he at, like when, actually so with the instructions i had a, a sort of like there was a very uh we had a i i had an editor with whom we argued a lot like in a good way, like in a very productive way. There's why I wanted to work with them. I'd worked with them um, on some short stories before and it was always helpful. And then it was the, it was the same with the instructions and, and he tended to win arguments. And then my new editor, we didn't argue so much. He is really good at writing the letter with the revisions. Um, and, and like, and I think like a lot of it, like I'm a pretty, there's, there's not a lot of, there's nobody I think who I'm going to ever believe understands my book better than I do. Like, I don't think that's a thing, but when there's someone who is clearly very intelligent, demonstrates an understanding of what I'm doing and tells me that a part of it is boring. I take that really seriously. Like I, I do never want like, like boring is like, that's, that's all I don't want to be. Like, like I said, like the thing is like, if I walk away from a novel that entertained me, and completely forget what happened in it. I'm happier than if some novel informed me about some bullshit and 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 I found it painful to read. Like I just I I want I I feel like there's a joy in reading. I think I, I, ideally um, fiction is going to do both things, but um, the joy is is first because. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, I went to grad school. Like, I, I, I can read <laughs> academic journals. Like, I can read scholarly things. And like, it's like go to a novel because you, you know, that there's it can do a thing that only it can do that 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 other forms can't do. So, yeah. so, and one of the things is like really like just like embrace you, like put you inside of it, and and make you want to live there. That doesn't happen. Like I love to read, you know, I love to read is the wrong phrase. I thoroughly um, find B.F. Skinner's writing amazing. <laughs> I, I, like it blows my mind to read it. It's not like it's a pleasure to read B.F. Skinner though. Yeah. It's just like, wow, this guy knows some shit and he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's granting me some ways to think about the world I wasn't able to before. But there's zero, there's almost zero pleasure. He's kind of a shitty writer. <laughs> so, so it's like, yeah. But that's not a novel. It doesn't pretend to be like, like I, you know, like from the novel you want, you want both. And the B, there is a BF Skinner novel, which I didn't even try. Cause I just feel like it would be embarrassing for him. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, well, cause I, I think that like in, in, uh, I mean like the doing both, right. So it's entertainment. What is the other thing? Mm. So I think like the, the emotional insight, like we get from, from these people and just, uh, like even beyond entertaining, mm. right. Like, how, like, this this book like goes like can meander about in like really entertaining and like fun ways but like when we get to the last like uh 100 or so pages right like it's kind of tore it's 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 barreling towards like intense like heartbreak and like oh yeah hopefully like hopefully. like who like, like drama yeah. right yeah like i mean so it's like <laughs> yeah. emotion, like i mean really crushing like heavy shit right like it's like yeah yeah and, and i think like throughout uh throughout that happens that happens too um 
Yeah. So, that's what, entertainment, yeah. right? I mean, like that's like yeah. that. That's I, like entertainment is just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. Word. Yeah. I'm not, you know, yeah. I, I didn't study English ever. Like, so it's like, but 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 there's there's something there is like there is a pleasure in being shaken and in being moved, um, and usually you're shaken and you're moved not by joy when you're coming at art. Like art is usually about fucking destroying you. Like when yeah. it's when it's great. I I, I think yeah. there's, there's a few yeah. there's a few instances that that's not the case but like we're not like in praise of happy endings in general like it's 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 yeah. usually like wow man this character who is just a construct made of words is now according to that construct dead and this makes me really upset like that's an amazing yeah. thing it's not usually like and they you know they found love <laughs> like that's a, that usually doesn't work it worked on tv because they smile and they have faces but in a book it doesn't, it doesn't work so good you know yeah yeah well, no, and, and like, I, I think that that is, uh, like, I mean, I don't know, and I guess this can segue into, into something else, but, but I feel like someone um, that is just perusing a bookshop and like sees books like this big, mm. but like isn't, I don't know, like isn't totally expecting in some way to like be emotionally like, re like to feel kind of a, a, a broad range of emotions, which actually people probably should because there's more pages like handled by you right. can imagine there's more stuff happening right like more stuff going so i mean what's it what's it been like having uh like operating in the industry as a as a big book writer well the trend is kind of skewing towards towards small or is it just is that what it is it's like this short trend do you think like how is the how's it been i mean i don't know like, like you know with the like it really depends like i, I have no i have no expertise on this like because it's yeah, like yeah. put out three books the last one came out during COVID. It's like, I don't meet people, but people write me, you know, fan letters and like, they get the book and they get it the way I wanted them to get it. And so like, I'm pretty happy about that. And like, with the long book thing, I just think, I think there are people like, I don't, I don't, I don't write fiction for people who need to be convinced that they should read fiction. Like, it's like, like I, I just don't, I think that's like a bad, that's a bad faith thing to do almost like bad faith yeah. is a, little, a little strong, but, but like, I'm not, it's not like, if you don't like novels, here's a novel. <laughs> it's like, if you like, if, you, but if, if, if somebody likes to read fiction or, you know, 20th and 21st century fiction, at least, yeah. like, I think that they're capable of picking up a big book and realizing it could be fun. Granted, there's a lot of like, a lot of books that sort of look like mine on the spine that are fat like that are a bit didactic and heavy, but but I think there's a lot of, um, I think, you know, like, and I, and I think of like, I don't, I don't wanna utter his name too much because it, like the, there was all this, whatever, but like Infinite Jest is a wicked fun book. Like Infinite yeah. Jest is not like a, a challenging book. In, like it's like the whole there, there's this whole thing where a big book equals a challenging book like you're like um you know you're like a real scholar and a real brainiac if you read big books and like that's i think that's false and i think like that book in particular gets uh gets pitched as this challenging hard to understand book and it's really it's a thousand page collection of short stories that are intermingled and like sort of work together thematically and do they, the, the arc of that novel is so simple yeah. and beautiful like but but it's like it's not you know it's not hard and so so i think a long time ago i read you know when i when i read that when it first came out um I'm trying to think if i'd read other long i'd read like other long books by horror writers or something like, <laughs> i read like Steve so like isn't like it like really long yeah, or yeah, yeah i never read it but yeah like the stand like like all these things that, these books aren't challenging they're like yeah, yeah. they're often boring at times which is yeah. the problem yeah. and the, the whole thing is like you know um I, I, yeah, I don't want to read a boring book and like, you know, and like, I, I don't want to you know name names of the books that are boring, yeah, but yeah, there yeah. are a lot, like, I'm not yeah. like, uh, I'm not someone who is like, I got to read a long novel right now at all. Um, I, yeah. So, so, so I, I, I tend to read shorter novels and, you know, I, I like their dynamics. Um, yeah. but do you look at yeah. something, you know, um, the, uh, what's the mailer novel, man? I'm looking at it right now. I can barely see execute uh, your song. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Execution. Have you read this? No, no. But oh, I think you've told me to read it. I think. Oh, <laughs> it's the fastest book yeah. that's like ever been written. 
like and, and and it's you know it's an it's a huge book way bigger than way bigger than bubble gum like yeah and like you you read this thing and you're just like well yeah what why shouldn't it be this way but there's just like yeah. punchy little sections over and over you're following the story there's like maybe a lag point somewhere like in the final third and then it picks back up again but whatever you know it's, it's like you can't criticize it's a yeah. made book and um it but but it's just but it's purely joy to read you don't you don't look at it and go if you look at it and say this is a challenge and if i read this i'm the smartest guy on the block you're kind of a moron to my mind yeah, whereas yeah. if you look at it and you go wow if this is good for a thousand pages i'm gonna have like a long period of fun reading yeah. this like then that, that's you know that's 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 how i want my work to be to be looked at at least i don't know, like yeah. I know it's a hard thing it's a hard ask i guess you know but shouldn't well, but yeah yeah and i i think that um like honestly i think that a lot of the infinite jest stuff is just the footnotes i think yeah, yeah. Have a hard time with the yeah, footnotes they're, 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 they're end notes. it's yeah, like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah holding the book it's tiny print and you don't want to like have to have a second bookmark which yeah. i understand man yeah like it's yeah. uh but yeah, but those those end notes are pretty good. It's 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 too bad they're in eight point font. I mean, but they're usually <laughs> worth like going to. I I, I yeah. mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, and I think that like you're um, well, that could I, I kind of want to finish up talking about something else. But I do think that like the energy in your novels is like similar to the energy in your short stories. It's just you're like holding the notes for longer, right? I think like it's just as easy as that, right? Like, so like Hot Pink, the short story, which, uh, you know, it's like beautiful and, and awesome, right? Like, like that could just be uh, like the same kind of things, the same voice, and like the same moves and the same excitement's happening. And you're just like, for whatever reason, you've decided to hold the note for a thousand pages, right? Instead of like 30. Yeah. And that's like one. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're asking why? No, I'm just uh, noticing. Yeah, because <laughs> I know the, like the why is like whatever. Because I decided to. I don't know. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, so so damn man. I mean, we are we are currently two uh, two Chicago dudes living in the South mm -hmm. now. Uh, yeah, I mean, because I know that you're you're a fan of like Paget Powell, right? Like, yeah. Uh, so, yeah before dude so florida. has your like writing kind of like changed living down here like being in florida or is it just the same i don't think so man I, not I, seeing like, the I, don't, I mean my writing my writing has changed because my writing like like my next book like i said is yeah. it, it's, it's shaped a lot different than than yeah. but i think i think every i'd like to think most of what i write ends up getting shaped a bit differently i think this one's more radically different but i started in chicago i mean i don't know oh, okay yeah but down here i mean like yeah i don't know i mean I'm, I think I'm more rapidly becoming an alcoholic here because <laughs> good whiskey is really cheap relative yeah. to Chicago, but, but, yeah. and that's probably having an effect, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but the actual, like, it's the same work day, you know, as it always has been. And like, uh, I mean, I don't know, I guess I, I like Florida, like Gainesville is creeping in a little into my work just because, um, I think one of the reasons that, that everything I write tends to be set in Chicago and then the next book is too, like, is just cause I know Chicago enough that yeah. I don't have to think twice about it. Like, I'm not like, what train do they ride, you know, yeah. to get to work? Like, like it's, it's, there's no questions like that. And like Gainesville now there's especially like the, the kind of crazy wildlife here or what's crazy to a Chicagoan, you know, I don't know if you got these in North Carolina, but these little lizards running around everywhere. Oh, yeah. You got time like in my garage, there's like <laughs> <laughs> wild right like it's yeah. you know like, cause, like yeah. I, I like them a lot like i, I see them and like yeah. you see one that someone ran over with their bike and it's sort of upsetting like I, I, for me like i don't know yeah. like that's a little guy he could have been my pet or something yeah. and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's strange and i think but i think i think most gainesvillians see them the way we would see ants or something they're like yeah because there are just millions of them uh or like a wicker park rat or something like wicker park rat yeah yeah, yeah. exactly exactly um maybe not quite as terrible as a wicker park rat. yeah yeah i don't know i feel like i'm just spending more time like outside than i ever have like i have uh like i lucked into well i guess like if anyone in the in the crowd can drop a questions in like the q a or in the chat 
to if y'all have uh, questions for 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 either of us or about anything. I don't know. I think Adam. Oh, Jeff Parker. Jeff Parker has has chimed in. Uh, he sent me a picture earlier of us uh, above his fire pit on a big projector screen. Uh, nice. I want to see it. So he's 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 living the life. Uh, and he asked, uh, "What's in the cylinder?" The cylinder. Oh, yeah, that. A painting. A painting from the cylinder. Oh. Um, a painting that uh, this 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 guy, great guy named um, Matthew Stewart, um who is like, who is a really good friend of uh, Salvador Placencia's when we were at Syracuse oh. together. He was in town and he does, he's, he's an amazing artist. And like, he just, uh, he sent me a painting of me, which like I had hanging in our last place in Chicago. Like he just sent it, like it was years ago. And like, like and then we moved here and I, you can't see the rest of my office, but like, I'm very slow to get into a place apparently. Cause I have nothing hanging in my office. Like my wife has hung everything all around the rest of the house. So like, that painting will go up as soon as I decide to put things up. But it's uh yeah, so that's that's that seems pretty it's, big. It's a massive, massive. It's huge. It's, yeah, yeah. It's 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 pretty cool. I have like hair in it and stuff. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, it's a reminder. Certainly. <laughs> you know, what it was like to have hair, you know. So yeah. uh yeah, so any anybody's got got more questions. I I can always ask. That's some more. No need. No need to be shy. We're all all friends here. Um, yeah. I mean, so how has like the the writing been this past year? Like, I feel like I've, I like I was having a hard time, uh, like during COVID, so I couldn't really put anything down um, for reasons I haven't totally unpacked yet. But I feel like I'm just now like getting back into some rhythm. So like, I mean, you're pretty regimented, right? Like with what you do, like were, were you disrupted at all by what was like? <laughs> Not, well, no, no, in fact, yeah. if anything, I mean, I think like, I don't know, man, there was like, there was a point, like I, I'm weirdly like, I'm like sort of uh, bipolar with optimism and cynicism. <laughs> like, and so it's like, so like everything, like the worst things get I, like the worst things we're getting, not just because of COVID, because of everything happening in the country. Yeah. I was just like, this shit's about to end. This is too <laughs> crazy, you know? And like, it's like, it was like, and you're almost like, you like, go one degree further so it can just end. And then it wouldn't. And like, but, but there was a lot of those days where it's like, it'll end just one degree further. And yeah. those days I, I think I wrote pretty well. Like, you know, I, <laughs> okay. you know, like it didn't, I didn't get disrupted. And then the other days it was, you know, just, yeah, this is horrible, but, but I feel like that's probably how I usually am. Um, I don't yeah. know. Like, like yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm sort of, I don't know. I mean, you personally know me a bit. Like, I, 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 I can, I can swing, you know, from my, <laughs> and I work every day. So, so, I mean, I finished a book. I, I like, it was like, I, I'm, I'm it's a, yeah. When did, so you started this next one in Chicago. Yeah. And you just finished it like last year and it's coming out. Yeah, I finished it in November. Yeah, and it should be it's out right. next summer or next fall. I'm not saying tell me the date yet. So And is that double day two? Yes. Yes. You know? yeah. Nice. yeah, yeah. It's cool. It's oh, cool. Sure, yeah, so you, you may have done what was the the Shakespeare play that he wrote in quarantine that everybody was talking about? Oh, I don't know. Did Shakespeare write a play in corn? See, see, this was probably yeah, the play. Yeah, you missed it because you're not on Twitter. Because you're not on Twitter. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I remember. Oh yeah, early on, people did the. Didn't he write? Was it King Lear? I mean, it was. It I was, think it might have been like King Lear or something. Yeah, yeah. And, every, and everyone was going to write King Lear. Yeah. And yeah. Was like this is great because we'll write King Lear. So that was that was the. Nobody wrote, yeah. nobody wrote King Lear. I think. Well, you yeah. might have. You might have wrote King Lear. Yeah, I probably, I probably did. I probably did. It's probably maybe it's a little better than King Lear. You know, it's more <laughs> important, you know. So. Gotta go a little last longer. Probably live longer than yeah. King Lear. Uh, so Claire, uh, wonderful Claire O'Connor. Hey Claire. Hi Claire O'Connor. Uh, As uh, both Levin and Gabe, when was the last time you chewed bubble gum, and what flavor was it? How was that experience for you? Hmm. Well. I can't remember the last time I chewed bubble gum. Really? 
I used You're to. You're a fraud. Probably, no, 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 probably because, no, 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 probably because, I mean, I'm sure I haven't chewed bubble gum since COVID began. No, that's a lie. No, no, no. Okay, so check it out. No, this is the last time I chewed bubble gum. Okay. They sent me this didn't happen because we didn't get to fucking do book tours because of COVID. But there was all this. See that? Oh, there's, dude, no way. There was all these things, man. And, and, and Doubleday was going to send them out to the bookstores. And my book oh, came out man. days after everything shut down. <laughs> so, like, it became... Like you can't send food because it might have COVID on it because no one knows shit about how this disease works. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so so that the last time I chewed bubble gum, I got those. They they sent them to me only a few months ago, and I chewed bubble. It's pretty good. It tastes like bubble gum, you know. Oh, it's you got to keep that that jar, I guess. Oh yeah, man. I got like I'll give you I'll give you one if you want. I got like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the stale the stale of bubble gum. No bubble gum. Yeah. No, it doesn't go, you know, it doesn't go bad. It stays in your stomach for 50 years or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so let's see, clear. I think I mean I chew like gum a lot, I guess. Like, but orbit isn't really bubble gum. I don't know. Like no, uh, chewing gum, my friend. Like big league chew. When's the last time like I had like big league chew? I think probably ah, a couple years ago. I'd say probably just the original, original, original pink stuff. Yeah, the original pink stuff just throw it in my mouth for some reason. Um, but hey, Claire, good to see you virtually. <laughs> and then uh, Paula Levin asks, uh, "How long into the character did Adam decide on Fonda James' name, and what comes to mind when he thinks of Jane Fonda?" Oh, pretty early, I think. I might have had Fonda Jane's name years ago before I ever wrote Fonda Jane. Because I think Fonda Jane Henry's a funny name because of, I don't know, because it's Jane Fonda backwards plus her father's name is her last name. So. That's it. And you just, uh, well, what about Belt Magnet? Belt Magnet, very long time ago. I always wanted to write about someone named Belt Magnet. Yeah, and like just, uh... Well, because I read somewhere that this kind of started as a short story that you were going to yeah. throw away. Yeah. You yeah. Like that. So yeah, you but you wrote a magnet in that story. That was just like, I, I, that was a separate thing. It was a separate thing. Yeah, that story sucked. Um, but uh, wait, so what, what sucked about it, actually? That's because I think that that explanation just stopped short of you explaining. Like, oh, it, it ended in like an opera. You know, it was like, uh, okay. it was a guy talking to. Uh, and he had a knife and the knife was talking to him and a swing set was talking to him and it told him to kill himself. And then it ends. Very, <laughs> very, very childish. Like, you know, it was, it, it was, uh, <clears throat> at the time I was like, I don't know. I, this, this is so, it was, it was an opera, you know? Yeah. yeah. Terrible story. Yeah. Well, I, cause I think like the way that the swing set, well, cause like Belt Mag kind of gets some celebrity because these swing sets are like begging him to kill them and he like destroys them with bats. Um, and I think the way that, like that's actually handled could be weird and cartoonish, but like just because it's this thing that happens that like mm -hmm. then just kind of lingers in the background of the story, mm -hmm. it's just this thing that he does. And then like what, like that thread, I think is like really interesting. Mainly, I mean, the final payoff where like the inanimate objects like bleeding uh, to be destroyed is like really interesting. But then even that scene I was talking about earlier with. Uh, like John Boat and the space helmet. And like just that even really like quiet moment where this stuff happens, I think makes that weird thing really worthwhile and like pay off in the end, right? Like it could be, no, uh, yeah. yeah, I think, I don't know. It's, a, it's one of those things that could be a gimmick in, in, in another hand. But then I guess when you imagine entertaining, it's like having this emotional register, right? Mm -hmm. Like that, uh, yeah. uh, it, deploying that stuff in various moments is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty nice. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, so I think we got like five minutes. If anybody wants to uh, type in or I don't know, just are you watching anything good that you like? Snowfall. Snowfall. Have you watched all of it yet? Have you no. Two seasons. Two seasons and one episode. I'm 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 shocked by how good it is. I'm shocked that like it was not ever you know recommended to me in the last four years. We talked about the reports. It's like yeah, like, the trailer was so bad for it. 
<laughs> no, and I think that it actually got like the first couple episodes got something like uh, it got a rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. I think oh, really? got like a twenty percent or something on like Rotten Tomatoes. Um, that's pure television fun, man. No, yeah. that, that's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a thing to look forward to. In you know the 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 the, the coming out of the pandemic moment, it's going to be the last binged show, hopefully. Um, yeah. So, so I mean, what is? Uh, oh, I think we actually have one in the Q and A. Uh, Drewcifer, which might be—is this Drew? Drew Gamble, I believe. Is yeah. this Drew? It seems like this would be Drew. Hey, Drew. Hey, Drew. Uh, what are you reading now, Mister? Am I reading now? Yeah. Um, I'm I'm actually reading. Uh, there's um there's this galley that I was sent by uh, uh, uh another Chicago writer, uh, uh Kyle Beachy. Um, oh, cool. it's, it's of a book, it's a book of skateboarding essays, which is like nice. so good. And, and I couldn't care less about skateboarding. And I, and I read this book and, and, uh, and I, I just sort of regret that I was never a skateboarder. I mean, I never could have been a skateboarder. Like I have no. Well, you must've like tried, right? Or something. Was that? You must've tried. Yeah. Yeah. A couple times. And then I was just like, I can do drugs a lot better than I can skate. Like it, 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 it was like, it, it just wasn't, it, it was embarrassing for me. But it's 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 really kind of um, it's it's this pretty beautiful book. Um, I'm almost done with it. I'm like three quarters done, and it's 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 excellent. Oh, yeah. cool. when does when does it come out? Uh, August. August. Nice, nice. Okay, well, a recommendation. For yes, you, for definitely. Everybody. Definitely. Uh, what am I reading? I don't know, man. My like uh, attention span has been kind of been kind of weird. I think like recently I I I'm, I'm reading like five different books at once, like. Uh, Barry, Barry Lopez's Arctic Dreams. Uh, I've gotten like really into, because uh, oh, I feel like just nature writing, um, like inherently is kind of like beautiful and pretty, right? Like kind of for, uh, yeah, like I don't know, like just describing people interacting with environments. I think it's like just kind of interesting to me. And um, I don't know, there's some things here. Wait, actually this, yeah. My, my laptop just went down a couple inches because of the. Uh, I picked up this recently, Twilight Zone, uh, by Nona Fernandez, a Chilean, and I guess it's like kind of sci-fi. I don't know. Like I'm now after seeing how Bubblegum has been described, I am resistant to all things labeling things uh, sci-fi yeah, and like yeah, genre yeah. and stuff. Uh, but cool, like about 1984 and uh, Pinochet's dictatorship. Uh, I would recommend loving it so far. And I don't know, a bunch of comic books around here and stuff. <laughs> uh, like, oh, this Godzilla, cause hold on, let's see, I got this nearby. The uh, Godzilla Half Century War is also all right. It was really pretty and, and it's quick. These graphic novels are quick, but we'll see. Oh, that's cool. Pretty, oh, wow. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, cool is a word for it. Cool yeah, no, I never read a Godzilla comic. I, mean, that's, that's, that's cool. I think this is the one to, this is the one to do. Um, or what my brother tells me and I believe everything he says about, about comic books. As one should with one's brother. Yep, yep. There we go wrong. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think, is that it? I think that's it. Like what we're should, done. We're what done. We do? Yeah. What do we do? You say goodbye <laughs> and then I, I call you and we have a drink. Yeah. Yeah. We can drive down, drive down to Gainesville. <laughs> <laughs> hey man. Hey. <laughs> well, thank you both for joining us and having a conversation tonight. Uh, thanks everybody for logging in to hear from these two. Um, if you haven't gotten a copy of the book yet, there's a link in that email that you were sent to get into Zoom tonight that'll uh, allow you to order your copy from Unabridged. Um, so thanks everybody for coming. Thank yeah. you, man. And th thanks for thanks for hosting us and uh, hope to see y'all soon in, in person. I guess talk, talk yeah. to you soon, Adam. Yeah, yeah I, want, I, want, I, want, I should say too, Unabridged, I love that bookstore. That, that, yeah. that I, I really do like probably you know like, like it's not like hi, hi seattle or whatever it, 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 it's it's a it's a it's a it's it's one of my favorite bookstores in in the world it, it, it's a great book
great, great person. Can't wait till you're yeah. back to visit us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I second it. I second. I second. Take care, guys. Everybody have a good night. Thank All right. Have a good night, y'all.